What's up guys and welcome back to another Two Minute Tuesday Q&A edition. Last week we covered a lot of your most popular questions I would say that I pulled from the comments. Questions that you guys have and I figured you know what, how can I answer those quickly? And this week is episode two because there were so many questions we figured let's cut it into two videos so that you're not here for 25-30 minutes with me just answering questions because Lord knows I'm not that entertaining. Anyways, I want to give a quick shout out by the way. I just read this book, Jeremiah Brown, The Four-Year Olympian. Very fascinating story by the way. Those of you that are interested in the rowing world and are looking for a good read, check this out. The Four-Year Olympian uh, athlete, basically Jeremiah Brown goes from not knowing anything about the sport of rowing uh, to the Olympics in a four-year window. So for those of you who are here thinking, man, this journey just seems so insurmountable, know that somebody else has taken that journey too and in fact ended up at the Olympics which is pretty darn cool in my opinion. So anyways, let's get into the questions. So as with all Two Minute Tuesday videos, it's time for us to put that number up on the clock and see how little I can actually keep to that time. Ready? Boop. Let's go. Why does rowing feel easy? I don't even feel like I'm getting a workout on 10. There's a very logical explanation for that and it's something that a lot of people struggle with when they're first on the machine. Unlike uh, an elliptical, a bike, or a treadmill that guides you through the movement, you have to place yourself in the right place at the right time with the right body mechanics in order to make this machine work for you. And that lack of feeling comes from not establishing tension on the chain. And that is what, it, by fixing that, you will begin to feel a workout and it will begin to feel challenging for you and that's exactly what we're looking for. What setting, I assume damper setting is what you mean, should I use when I start? Very, very common question. Uh, there's one place where I tend to start a lot of my athletes and that is at drag factor 117. Easy way of finding that. You're gonna go from your monitor on a concept two, you're going to go to more options and display drag factor. From there it says row to display drag factor. On the right hand side, the, the plastic adjustable wheel, or the plastic adjustable damper setting, that's what it is, uh, you're going to adjust that up and down until the number on your screen reads 117. Remember, damper setting is not a unit of measurement, D drag factor is, and, and that number on your screen is going to be the answer for where you should start or what number you should start on. I like 117 for all my athletes to start at. As you get better, you can pick your own numbers and vary it up and down. Number seven, can you demonstrate your ski technique? Sure. Just kidding, I'll actually talk about my techniques. So there are really two schools of thought at this point in time. Uh, there is the, I guess, taller version versus the traditional ski version. So let me just talk about the two. Let's start with the traditional ski version. This is would be uh, a typical polling method where you would imagine that you're actually skiing, which means that you're not, you can't overreach when you're actually skiing because the poles are only so tall. So you have a much shorter technique and it's a little bit crisper. You aren't taking the handles or driving them down as deep. You're really just hand ending with the handles at the pockets and you're only coming up to about head height. If you took a look at cross country ski poles, they are t a little bit taller than alpine ski poles, which means that that's really the height at which you would uh, start the catch position or the polling position. That's where you would plant and then drive down. Hands would only pass by the pockets. Now the second technique is going to be the taller and what I would consider the refined for the ski erg technique. 
meaning that they are trying to take advantage of the mechanics of the machine. So they are less going after a traditional technique and simply trying to optimize the way that you interact with the machine. And in this technique, you're reaching a little bit taller and as a byproduct of getting taller, you end up with a longer stroke and those pulls start as close to the pulleys as possible, uh, getting yourself tall but in a bit of, uh, I think like a hollow position. And then you're going to end up with a little bit lower follow through hands passing about by the knees. So there's a lot more leg involvement. It's definitely a little bit more taxing. So the, the uh, school of thought is the maximize the machine technique or traditional skiing technique. Question eight, what about breathing during the stroke? That is a very common and also a great question. The way that I like to explain it is let whatever breathing rhythm happens naturally occur. Try not to force an inhale at a certain point or an exhale at a certain point. And where I go from there is once you've established that you, you know what your natural breathing pattern is, you need to maintain that rhythm and use that rhythm to help you set pacing. Meaning if you want to establish a low stroke rate, you're still going to breathe at the same points during the stroke. You're just going to make it longer and slower. If you need to take the stroke rate up, you're going to make them shorter and more crisp, but you will keep the same breathing rhythm and that rhythm helps you stay consistent and find efficiency on the machine. So again, what I really want you to think about is that as you are taking your stroke, you are simply paying attention to and learning from your breathing pattern. Now, to start, you're going to want to just be aware. Now, I know that sounds uh, a little free, if you will, um, but really, all you wanna do is row as you comfortably and normally row, and all you do is listen to what your breathing naturally wants to do. Don't try to force it, don't try to do anything specific, just let a natural rhythm happen. Then once you figure that out, then you can begin to use that as a rhythmic uh, pace setter for your body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my breathing pattern and I'm going to make it uh, overly loud so that you can hear it and that you understand how I use it when I adjust my pay, adjust my stroke rate, if you will. So uh, I'm going to take my stroke rate up and down audibly breathing so that you can hear how it would adjust based off of the stroke rate. So those are your basic questions. Again, I, I kind of enjoyed doing this. So if you guys keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. And maybe we'll throw another one of these Q&As in another time soon if you guys really love this video. And as always, guys, thank you for joining us. If you really love this video, we'd, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. And if you really enjoyed it and you want to make sure that you get an alert every time we come out with a new video on Tuesdays and occasionally with another video some other time, hit that bell because you will get that alert. And as always, thank you for tuning in. We will see you on the other side. What shoes should I wear when rowing? Well, you have a few different options. My personal preference is going to be an Innovate shoe. 